What's going on guys, it's Simo. So today I'm bringing to you five must know tips to get good at Yu-Gi-Oh fast. Let's start with tip number one, learn what the best decks do. I cannot stress enough how important this is because for any new or returning player, they may be overwhelmed by the sheer amount of cards that Yu-Gi-Oh has in the game at any given time. But when you break it down and start to look at the context of any particular metagame, you start to realize that that vast pool of cards begins to shrink significantly. I would would say on average that there's going to be about two to three decks that are considered tier one or the best decks. Then you've got a handful of decks, let's say four or five, maybe more that are at the tier two or maybe even rogue level. And then you're going to have a myriad of other decks that are going to be also trying to compete as well. But when you think about it, it makes the most sense to focus on those tier one and tier two and rogue strategies, because those are the decks you're going to be seeing with the highest frequency, whether you're playing online or in person. If you even want to extrapolate this to a local level, just take note of what deck every person at your locals is playing, and that way you can prepare yourself by reading up on what all the cards are, what their basic strategies are, and what those players are trying to do so that they can win the game. That way you can prepare yourself by preparing counter strategies and being able to know when you need to stop certain effects. Learning what the best decks do is imperative to your success, because if you don't know what your opponent's deck does, it doesn't matter how good yours is, there's a very high likelihood that they know what yours does and they're going to be able to outmaneuver you every step of the way. Number two, do not be afraid to net deck. Now for people who may not know what net decking is, net decking is the process of going online, looking up strategies that have already seen success from past tournaments, and then copying that deck verbatim and playing it yourself. This is a way that you know for a fact that these decks work because they've gotten first, second, maybe third place at top tier tournaments. So why would you handicap yourself and make it more difficult to try to get better at the game just because you don't want to copy what someone else did? There's so much shame surrounding this concept, and I really don't understand why. Net decking is a very important part of the evolution of the metagame because not everyone is the same caliber of player. Some players are innovators and are able to create a deck from virtually nothing and kind of figure out what the best deck of a given format will be. Other players are refiners, which are able to take decks that have already seen success and maximize their efficiency so that they can be even better than their initial form. And some players have really strong technical play or the ability to play the game very well, but they're really poor deck builders, or maybe they don't have the time to commit 10, 20, 30 hours to nitpick individual card choices on whether or not they're going to get a 1% increase of probability of seeing specific cards. Time is also a very important factor here as well. Why would you start from ground zero when people have already seen seen success with numerous strategies and you can take what they've seen success with, play it a bit yourself, and maybe you're not going to like everything about their deck, but it gives you a strong foundation to work from. And then that's going to be able to just kickstart you and really get you into the thick of playing without having to spend a ton of time to do so. I personally believe that we need to end net deck shaming because it's impeding the progress and evolution of so many strategies because people feel shame that they didn't come up with something originally. That's that's not how this works. A lot of the top players in the game net deck just to get started and then they'll fine tune and hone their strategy and then go on and win the next YCS. Number three, utilize your side deck to its full potential. The side deck is arguably more important than your main or extra deck because you play more games with your side deck than without. Think about this, even if you won every single match you ever played 2-0, then that means 50% of those games you would have had to use your side deck. Conversely, worst case scenario, if every match you played went to a game three, then that means 66% of your games took advantage of your side deck. And so your main deck and extra deck are important, yes, but your side deck is just as important because you're going to be utilizing it a lot. This actually circles back to my first point about learning what the best decks do and allows you to put that into practice, because if you know what the best decks do, you can prepare your side deck accordingly. Now, the side deck is highly complex. Complex. I actually did an entire video about side decking if you want to learn more, but one of the most important aspects of the side deck is knowing what you're going to put in your main deck and what's going to come out of your main deck. When you're side decking, you don't want to take away from your core engine because that's going to be how your deck primarily functions. And if you take out cards that are going to stop you from achieving your main win condition, then that's going to be a deterrent in helping you win games two and three. Conversely, you want to have some silver bullet cards that 
are going to give you a higher probability of winning that matchup. Some cards might stop your opponent from advancing their game state. Other cards might give you a slight edge just because they perform very well in a particular matchup. And in fringe cases, you might experience where you might want to counter side what your opponent might side deck against you just to be prepared for anything they might throw at you. Side decking is a hell of a science and the better you get at it, the faster you're going to improve. Number four, practice with people who have more experience. This is a pitfall I'll see new or returning players fall into time and time again, because whether you're new or returning, or maybe you don't really play competitively, you might have a small or medium sized group of friends that you like to play with quite often and beating your friends match after match after match may be satisfying and entertaining, but it's not going to help you evolve as a player. When you encounter others who are either at your skill level or above your skill level, that is where you have the highest opportunity to learn. Players who have won regionals or topped YCSs or who have even gone to the world championship have a different mindset and have played, you know, thousands, if not tens of thousands of games and have so much experience under their belt that they're going to be playing at an entirely different caliber than any other player you may have experienced before. Before the quarantine, when I was attending YCS events every single month, I really felt that that was some of my best growth as a player because I was constantly surrounding myself with players who were better than me and I had the opportunity to learn so much more in a much shorter frame of time. And I would start to see my progress as a player improve because I was starting to finish at higher and higher placements at each and every tournament I attended. Even just talking with some of these players or watching some of them play without actually playing yourself is a great way for you to learn some things that you may have never realized before. And there's lots of great ways to do this. When there's large tournaments, you can watch feature matches, players post content on YouTube all the time. You can go on Dueling Book and watch the top rated players play at any time of the day. So there's plenty of ways to expose yourself to higher caliber play. You just have to know where to look. I know that for me personally, one of my favorite things is interviewing some of these top players and bringing that content to you guys so that way we can all learn together and help grow as a community. And for my fifth and final tip, this one may be a bit difficult, but this might be the biggest and most important tip of them all ask yourself why you lost. I feel that new or returning players or maybe more novice or inexperienced players have this tendency to attribute their losses to things that were out of their control. Oh man, I was in this winning position and then he just top decked exactly what he needed and I lost because of it. Oh man, my opponent just sacked me. There was nothing I could do. My opponent's just super lucky or I'm super unlucky. Anyone who attends a lot of tournaments knows exactly what I'm talking about. But the thing is, I don't feel like players necessarily analyze every single aspect of their game as microscopically as they should and really find the reason that their loss occurred. Maybe you used a hand trap at an inopportune moment and your opponent was able to capitalize. Maybe you weren't aggressive enough at a certain point and that could have ended the game three turns sooner. Maybe you made a side decking error and brought in too many cards or not enough cards or maybe you took out the wrong cards and made it difficult for you to win. Maybe you didn't read your opponent's card and realize the interaction that was going to occur until after it happened and lost as a result of it. I could go on because there are countless examples that would qualify here, but the thing is Yu-Gi-Oh is very intricate and the slightest mistake could ultimately be the reason why you win or lose a game. Humility is your best friend here. If you lose, maybe take a moment and ask your opponent what you could have done differently to maybe have won that game or maybe how you could have played around something a little bit better. You'd be surprised at the number of players that are willing to give out advice and take the time to talk with you just because they want to help you get better because ultimately in the end our community is very small and we want to have as many people playing as possible. If you follow these five tips I guarantee you will get better at Yu-Gi-Oh much faster than you ever imagined. But guys that's going to do it for me. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about your top tips for anyone who might want to get good at Yu-Gi-Oh fast. I'd really love to hear your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Be sure to like the video as always. Subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh content. And if you found this video helpful, consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a YouTube channel member. Because just by showing your support in any way that you can, you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh content. So thanks so much again, and we'll see you next time.